Hello. I'm Glenn W. Worthington. I'm literally the guy who wrote the book on diamonds in Arkansas. And what you're looking at right here is a grease table. And I don't know if you've heard, but for more than 100 years, grease tables have been used to separate diamonds from the other gravel. And <clears throat> what I'm going to do, uh, while I'm talking here, I'll tell you about grease and and how it works. Um, I'm going to be painting a layer on here. Uh, diamonds have a unique characteristic. They are hydrophobic. In other words, they repel water. In other words, diamonds are unwettable. All other rocks, you put them in water and they get wet. Diamonds, you can't get them wet. So, <clears throat> if uh, taking advantage of this characteristic, it's one way to separate diamonds from other rocks. Uh, if you ran rocks dry across grease, they're all going to stick in the grease. But if you run them wet, wet rocks won't stick to grease. Well, a diamond isn't wettable, so a diamond is going to stick. So, I'm uh, painting a layer on here of this grease. This is special grease. You probably you hear the word grease and you think of that black goo that you use on a car or truck or something. But this is more like wax. Uh, in fact, one guy told me a recipe to make your own grease is to mix paraffin and petroleum jelly, uh, in other words, Vaseline, uh, Vaseline, paraffin, which is wax, and lamp oil. And I can't remember the recipe, you know, what, how much of which or whatever. And I guess it doesn't really matter because I've got my own grease. This is DB43, De Beers 43rd formula. I guess they studied uh, what was the best grease uh, formula and uh, they like their 43rd recipe the best so this is a DB 43 and you can no longer purchase DB 43 I guess the beer has finally figured out wait a minute why should we give away our trade secret to our competitors who are finding diamonds and selling them but oops too late I've already got some I, I worked for three years in diamond exploration and recovery outside the state park because there are seven known diamond pipes outside the state park and we, uh, we did diamond exploration and recovery in many of those pipes. Um, <clears throat> when the company closed up, sold out, sold their equipment and it was all shipped to Canada Thunder Bay, Ontario, they didn't take their 55-gallon drum of DB43, and I said, hey, does anybody else want this, and everybody said no, and I thought, well, there's no sense leaving it here, so I brought my refrigerator dolly and loaded it up and brought it home, and now I can use this grease for my own grease table. So the way this works, water will waterfall over this, and I will sprinkle gravel, slowly, lightly sprinkle gravel across here. And the water will wash it across the grease, and the diamonds will stick, and all the other gravel will wash on down. I've got an uh, old metal wash tub here with water in it, and I've got a recirculating pump and it'll just pump the water up here and it'll be really neat. This is the night before running the grease and I'll tell you why I'm doing this now instead of later. Um, we'll run the grease tomorrow so watch that video. Grease is very particular. <laughs> if it's too hot 
everything will stick to it. All the rocks will stick to it. If it's too cold, nothing, not even the diamonds will stick to it. It'll run off like linoleum. And that's been the problem in the past when grease tables were used by some of the companies trying to recover diamonds at what's now known as the Crater Diamond State Park when they were commercially being mined. I know uh, in particular the Glen Martin plant which is located there just outside the visitor center as you step out the back door towards the diamond field it's to your left just over the hill. They had grease tables and they didn't have a room that was heated in the winter or cooled in the summer. So their grease probably wasn't working most of the time and that's why they didn't recover diamonds too well. That That's just not my opinion but others at the time said they're not, the temperature on their grease isn't right and you know you just lose your diamonds that way so you're just wasting your time. So <clears throat> The reason I'm doing this the night before is this grease needs to work between 65 and 70 degrees. Well, your grease needs to be that temperature, your water needs to be that temperature, and the gravel needs to be that temperature. So I went ahead and filled this with water now, and tonight it's going to be, well, it'll be 68 degrees when we wake up in the morning. So it'll be perfect weather for running it. Now, I do have it, an air conditioner in here, so if I have to run this when it's hot, I can. But might as well take advantage and not even run the air conditioner. It's going to be 68 tomorrow, so that's perfect grease table weather. And uh, <clears throat> I've got extra water in five-gallon buckets sitting in here, so it'll all be the right temperature if I need more water because as I run this down this tub will begin to fill with gravel so I'll scoop the gravel out anyway if I lose some water because I'm taking wet gravel out then I've got 68 degree water to put back in the system you don't want to run a hose with city water in here because you don't know what temperature it is so I filled it with city water now and then I'll just recirculate it in this <clears throat> closed system here, the uh, the wash tub with the water in it. <clears throat> so, as you can tell, the way you do this, kind of like Bob Ross painting, you know, you, you fill your knife up real full here, and you put this little happy layer on, and just smear it around, all oh, about an eighth of an inch thick. Mainly, you just want to coat it uh, real good so the diamonds will stick. And I'm just about done putting it on. It's not too bad. Uh, not as nasty as you think, you know, working with grease would be. Because uh, it's really kind of like, like wax. But I did wear the gloves just so I didn't get all gooey. But, um, <clears throat> they... They like to have a vibrating motor on this. See this table? Oops, table kind of shakes. There it goes. Um, <clears throat> it'll vibrate when I've got it all plugged in. But very little vibration, really, and that's not all that important to me. It's just so that if the, the temperature is right and you've got the diamonds running across the grease. And then <clears throat> after you get done running all the gravel down here that you think has diamonds in it, when you're done running it all across, you just scoop this back off with a putty knife and you put it in a big pot and you add water to the pot. And then you take it into the kitchen and heat it up and after all the grease melts, it'll release the diamonds. And you turn the heat off and walk away. The grease will float to the top. Just let it cool naturally then you can take a knife and just cut that thick layer of grease off of the top of that big pan you cooked it in. And then all that's left in the pan is water on the bottom because the grease floats, water on the bottom, and then the diamonds on the very bottom. So you just pour that out on a paper towel and let it dry and then look through them and you can find your diamonds. And 
I'm I usually just sort through and see my you know look at my diamonds visually but I'm running some real fine material and I don't want to look for microscopic diamonds but this will catch <laughs> I've used this to catch diamonds less than one point so less than one one hundredth of a carat and it works it'll catch them any size diamond big small whatever diamonds are not wettable and they'll stick to the grease well I'm about done uh, painting this happy little tree over here uh, and in the morning if you'll join me we'll uh, run the gravel across here you can see the water water flowing down here it's real important to have this level so the water runs right and the gravel just water falls over it'll just drop and drop and I think when it, it drops off of one ledge and down into the other it kind of forces itself down into the grease too so anyway they've got it all figured out I didn't design this this is an actual grease table uh, used for this very purpose but there's not a whole lot to it and uh, anyway join me tomorrow and we will run it Right now, we'll just let everything set and uh, cool down to a 68 degrees, and uh, we'll be able to run. My gravel's in here, too, so that it's 68 degrees. You don't want to run hot gravel across it, either. So, everything will be the right temperature. 